Luxker here. Welcome to Zeno News, a monthly news series where me and the guests talk about news from Zeno Gears, Zeno Saga, and the Zeno Blade games. I am joined by Spitchy, a fellow Zeno Blade YouTuber who is playing Zeno Blade Definitive Edition currently right now on YouTube, and it's also a blind playthrough. So, uh, how are you doing today, Spitchy? I am doing fantastic. Lux, I'm doing great. How about yourself? This is a fine morning. I'm doing fantastic as well, and I can't wait to just go through all this news with you too. So make sure to click the like button, subscribe, comment, and share this video around, and hit the notification bell for my channel. It really helps for you to get notified on whatever I make videos each and every day. So let's go ahead and get started. So, our first uh, Zeno news story uh, is not really much news in general. Um, I've been trying to find Zeno Gears news throughout the whole month, and I just could not find any kind of news in general. Like, it's just, like, been kind of a slow news month for Zeno Gears in general. So, let's go ahead and go on to our actual next news story, which is uh, Wayo Records, a uh, French uh, composition company who does uh, video game arrangements, is now doing a Zeno Saga Episode 1 uh, arrangement album. And their campaign started like in the middle of the month. It was kind of unexpected, really. And by the way, this is also an official arrangement. So um, it Bandai Namco is involved with a lot of the things. Uh, and even Yasunori Mitsuda is on the team, so let's go ahead and check out their Kickstarter. So, notable names are Miriam Abenasser, who worked on Xenoblade Chronicles 3. She's one of the composers for it, and uh, she does an amazing job in general. And she also worked on uh, other, more, a lot of other Mitsuda works as well. Akio Noguchi is an, also another person who did uh, pieces for the Xenoblade series, more particularly... Uh, he played the flutes for Xenoblade 3 and uh, was responsible for those recordings using Noah and Mio's uh, flutes as well, which was really cool, if I'm being quite honest, that they were using those flutes. And then we also have Kiyoshi Arai, who did uh, design work for Xenoblade Chronicles X, which is really cool in general. And of course, Yasunori Mitsuda is also part of the composition team as well. So... They've raised a whole ton of money right here. Like, their regular goal, it was uh, 30,000 euros. And now they're, like, all at least 90, 90k euros right now. Like, they already met the stretch goal right now. And they're on track to make the final stretch yeah, that's goal, which is 100k euros. And that's really cool to see. Yeah, it's, like, really nice. Um, the last stretch goal is that they're going to have a concert in France, which, yeah, that's... Definitely something a lot of people will be looking forward to, just to watch this concert live with in France. Um, funny coincidence, though, is that Zeno Saga Episode 1 it wasn't even released in France, so just uh, having something like this uh, that, like, French fans who never actually officially played a Zeno Saga game can actually just, uh, just watch the concert just live w among them in general, so... Yeah, that'd be kind of good for me, since I never played the Zeno Saga games, because, like, I was born like in like the 2000s so i never got to experience them. so there's also multiple tiers for the kickstarter as well this the smallest one is of course you'll get the digital album it's the cheapest option but if you scroll down uh there's also more tiers you can get like the cd you can get the vinyl and um and then there's one uh that i went for which is the song of nephilim this one uh in particular is one that i with for uh just just in general because it's like the cheapest option and you can get like illustrations that are a part of that are made by kiyoshi arai as well um like a shikishi board and an art print as well um and then there's zarathustra's treasure down here which uh, along with the other uh stuff that you get you can also get a music box that has the credit song of Zeno Saga episode one kokoro and yeah, that's a really cool thing to actually own if you're a huge Zeno Saga collector, just getting this music box and having it for yourself. Um, unfortunately, that's getting a music box along with it was kind of a little bit too much for my taste, so I ended up just going for the Song of Nephilim one in general. And then the final one, which is all gone now, you can't get anything, is the Zohar's uh, uh, Secret, 
which is basically you get all the previous rewards plus a hand signed uh shikishi and the ikri uh square print which you get double for it as well as the fact that you get your name featured in the booklet and a, and a dedicated page as well it's just really cool and uh all 10 of these backers are gonna get a, a really good deal out of this um a very expensive deal but a great deal no less in, in uh getting featured in a piece of history that will probably be really exciting for Zeno Saga fans in general. So, so yeah, what do you think about this in general? I mean, I know you're not much into Zeno Saga, Spitchy, but like I'm a pretty I'm pretty big into Zeno Saga myself and I really enjoyed enjoyed the series and seeing seeing somebody arrange or a company arrange of the uh, whole entire soundtrack of one of the games was really cool to see. So, what do you think about this whole thing, Spitchy? Uh, I feel like it's going to be a good thing for most Xeno fans or Xeno Saga fans to be part of this campaign, the people who love Xeno Saga, particularly a game that didn't really do that well, but I'm not here to judge. I feel like this would be a good thing for most people who haven't played Xeno Saga or have, especially me. Like a lot of people donated to this 80k euros, and that's fantastic just to just see in general, so. Yeah, it's a really cool project they're working on. I can't wait to see more stuff that, that gets added in the future, too. Um, yeah, it's really cool stuff. So let's go ahead and get on to our next news story for Xenoblade 1. So Pixel Mixers is a tribute album maker, and uh, they make unofficial tribute albums for uh, a, a wide variety of video game albums. Uh, one of them is that they made is based off of Xenoblade Chronicles, and... Just looking through this album in general was really cool to see. Um, they got like 35 tracks uh, that were uh, the work of like Miami Kyoto, Yoko Shimomura, Tomoro Kudo, and Yasunori Mitsuda, of course. Um, exactly. Yep, and there's uh, over 100 musicians, 100 uh, fans of the Zeno series uh, contributed to these, this alone. And that's amazing to actually see like that like so many fans just coming together and just making a tribute album just for them alone was really cool. Um, their, yeah, indeed. Their cover art is amazing as well. I like. Uh, it's actually made by an artist uh, by the name of Sean Sori. They're a really great uh, Xenoblade artist, and I highly recommend checking out, out their work. And their co album cover is really cool too. So I will probably check them out at some time. And uh, here's where you can find them at. Uh, you can find them on Spotify, obviously. You can find them on uh, iTunes, Amazon, YouTube Music, all those uh, sites that you listen to music in general. And uh, yeah, it's a really cool thing that they just put together. So what do you think about uh, this fan-made album, Spitchy? I think it's very, how do I say, amazing, fantastic, spectacular. Uh, a soundtrack of my favorite game. Yeah, ga a very good uh, piece of work in general. Like I, like I, I wish I had the time to actually uh, listen to it. Maybe like, uh, maybe when I'm off or something and I don't really have much going on, just chill out and listen to the Chain Attack music Pixel Mixers just put together. So yeah, listen to Xenoblade One music from a game that's my favorite of all time, especially from an artist that made both trash for Kingdom Hearts, this game, and Chrono Trigger. So I honestly think that this album should be, you know, worth their while. It will put nice to your ears with the nice um, Springfield sound of Gaur playing, the nice empathy soundtrack of Satoru Marsh, and who wants to and wants to hear the, that techno alien music of Makatas and hear that rock out <laughs> <with> the mechanical <laughs> exactly, rhythm. Exactly, I know it's like. That, like, there's different kinds of genres that they put in here. I've heard, like I said, there's like over 100 musicians. So, like, I, 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 I kind of actually want to try looking through this myself just to see what, what they've done in general. So, but yeah, really cool thing that they put together. Shout outs to all the musicians and all the designers that put this whole thing together. It's a lot of work it could, uh, contributing to just a whole team of people making music in general so props to them for this so now it's music time <laughs> exactly all right let's head on over to the next uh, news story which is not Xenoblade X news because we still don't have much news for Xenoblade X now 
So, uh... Skill issue. Yeah, no no kidding. <laughs> Subtle Blade X needs more news. Alright, well, let's go ahead and on to our next piece of news, which is uh, Mithra figure is uh, back in stock at Good Smile uh, Online Shop US. Um, the figure is amazing. I've shown it in many videos before, and uh, if you want to just pay the figure at a pretty decent price for a figure and not have to pay like exorbitant shipping prices right now, now's a good time to pick this up. It's a really nice looking figure in general. It's one of the better Zell Blade figures. So, um, how do you how do you actually feel about this figure, uh, Spitchy? Do you own this figure at all? Um, not really. There has a I haven't really gone out to get any like Xenoblade merchandise, even though I'm a fan of the series. The only Xenoblade related I have is like the Sh 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 Shulk Amiibo from Smash Brothers. That's basically it, but maybe someday, maybe around the future when I'm like 45, I'll probably get this. But uh, <laughs> this Mithra figure, like whoever, there's a lot of Aegis lovers out there because this is a waifu character. But I honestly, this would be good for their collection, especially for me, though. The Melia figure would still be worth their while for Melia fans like me, but... Yeah, I wish that figure, I wish that figure in particular would back in stock. That's a really yeah. nice one. Especially with Xenoblade so. going, to start to become a lot more iconic worldwide. Especially when the Cloud Saga is ending and we're trying to see what's else for the future. So honestly, I think... This figure is going to be worth your while to have on your collection for those many Mithra and Pyra wa waifu lovers. So I haven't actually displayed my figure yet because I'm actually waiting to find a good shelf to use this Mithra figure in general. And uh, yeah, I just need I'm just looking for a specific time and like just have, need the money for it in general. So, um, but I'll definitely uh, make sure to uh, buy this figure. It's a nice, really good one and a really fantastic one at that so let's indeed yep so let's go ahead and go on to our last news story which is xenoblade 3 news and right here we actually got some page previews of the xenoblade 3 art book and uh there's not much interesting stuff going on really um there's a couple things that i want to actually point out but uh there's a whole ton of pages of art here, like like we I've talked about in a previous video. There's over 400 pages of art here, and it's really cool to see like concepts for uh, like weapons and character designs and whatnot in general. Um, yeah, these are just so cool to see, just looking like this and stuff. Um, more, a lot more so than the Xenoblade 3 Collector's Edition art book. Um, and yeah, I, I can't wait for this to come out very soon, and, and, and literally a few days as I'm uh, posting this on YouTube. Um, so I want, actually want to go ahead and uh, talk about Matthew's uh, section right here, which has some a few interesting things that go along with it. One is like the standard uh, Saito expressions for uh, his character. Um, he and uh, his concept designs are also really nice with his uh, fit fists and stuff. Um, one of them is actually he's just picking up a gigantic rock. Like that's so funny. Just he's he car carrying rock with a uh, rock with one hand. Like he's like uh, he's like Guts Man from Mega Man. Yeah, he's like Guts Man in a way. It's really it's really silly if you think about it. Like um, I always like to joke about whenever people talk about uh, Matthew picking up a rock like this. I just be like from the DK rap. He's picking up a boulder with relative ease and I'm stuff like that. It's beans. really silly. Whenever I see that there. Also, some other concept designs is that his gloves can actually turn into a giant hammer, which is would be really interesting if it were, were modeled in, in this day and age. So, but yeah, that's Matthew's page right there. Another thing about the art book is something interesting that Robasi pointed out. Um, unfortunately, this whole book is going to be in Japanese, so it's gonna, I'm not great at just translating the pages and stuff like that. But... It's mentioned in the art book that uh, the X shape that Noah has for uh, the technology that powers up his weapons and stuff, um, that cross shape is actually just like a series stapled X symbol. And that goes the same way with N's red cross on his chest as well, which is really cool to see. Um, that's a, a, such a nice little detail there. So um, what do you think of the art book actually, Spitchy? 
I haven't seen the art book myself, but if I have, it would probably I'll be like, whoa, this is so awesome, this is so cool. I'll be like, whoa. It's it, 400 it, pages of artwork. Like, you can't argue with having that, you know? It's like watching a, It's like watching your favorite anime manga. You just want to keep reading and reading and see what it's like. It's like yeah, all the concepts and stuff. Um, it's going to be all in Japanese, so um, I'm actually waiting for a scansulation. Hopefully happen very soon afterwards and look through all the details and whatnot. But for right now... Um, the art is going to be really fascinating to see, and I can't wait to actually uh, talk about it with other people, too. So, and yeah, that that is it for Zeno news. So there's no merch news this week, unfortunately. Uh, there's not much really that I can actually uh, show off. All right, that's fine. But uh, thanks for joining, Monado Spitchy. Um, happy to have you here. Um, do you happen to... Same here for you. Yeah. Um, where can we find you at, Spitchy? Uh, you can find me on YouTube, uh, Twitter, Instagram, and that's pretty much it. Check If you guys are looking forward to my any other last plays I do in the future, maybe a Mario game, another J JRPG, anything like that, check out my YouTube channel for the next part of Xenoblade Definitive Edition Part 56, I think. My favorite game of all time. And make sure you guys don't spoil the game, all right? Don't spoil it. Yeah, no way. Uh, no spoilers at all, for sure. Indeed. Um, all right, everybody. Thanks for watching again. And until next time, see, see you on, on the other, other side! side.